Hi, so nice to meet you. Same here. And congratulations on the film and on your performance. I can't take my eyes off you. You're just like pretty much. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. Thank you so yeah. much. So we can start right now. Uh, can you please elaborate on why the story of the deal was inspired by your relationship with your mother and the sacrifice, sacrifices she made to give you a better life? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's so much about my relationship with my mom that you will see on screen. Um, I, I want to tell you some of the sacrifices she made, but I, there's, I think that's kind of getting a little bit too personal, but uh, there's a moment I'll, uh, I'd like to share. It's after she passed away already, she passed away nine years ago and um, I was surrounded by my relatives. It was not long after she died and we were having a conversation. And as we were talking, it dawned on me what she had sacrificed during her life for me to have the life that I have. And in that moment, just everything just fell. And I realized, and you see that moment in the deal as well, when Annalyn realizes it through, uh, you know, through conversations with her mom. And when that, when those things happen, when we can, when I can take something that happened in my real life with my mom and put them up on screen, it just, it means the world to me, but everything about the way we loved each other and how we fought and how I got mad at her and how I yelled at her. <laughs> um, truly so much of it is, is from our relationship. And she was a single mom. She, she gave me everything. Um, so to me, this is, uh, this is truly a love song that she deserves in, in real life. She actually, she wanted me to help her tell her life story but I didn't know how um, I actually bought her a book on how to write a bio an autobiography when one Christmas, hoping that she would read it and, and start to write. She never did. But then after she died, I realized, you know, I still don't think I can tell a story about her life, but I can tell a story that honored how much she loved me and how fiercely she loved me. That's very moving to hear. Can you just tell me her name, please? Their mother's name? Please? Yes, thank you so much for asking. It's Linda Montano. Okay, thank you. And I love the name of your character. I love yeah. it. How did you come up with a beautiful name? I just love I have it. To give, oh, I'm so glad. Uh, I love it too. I, I have to give full credit though to our writer, Sean Prezant, who is not Filipino, <laughs> but he did a lot of research, I know. And we, we bantered and we talked about lots of different names and threw a whole bunch of different options out there. But he was the one who came to the table with Tala Bayani. And what's the backstory of Tala? We all know and we are aware of the Filipino diaspora, you know, Filipinas all, are, all over the world. So, But in your backstory of Tala, how did you end up in uh, Eastern Europe? Oh, sure. Um, so because the planet has been so ravaged by uh, this virus worse than we'd ever seen, um, plus climate change events, there were just pockets of survivors left. And so our theory was that the different groups that would uh, come together for their own survival sake would come from different, uh, different countries, different cultures. So we tried to make it as multicultural as possible. And that's why you have, you know, you have uh, Filipinos, you have Black people, you have Eastern European people, you have South American people, you have, you know, we had, you know, we worked really hard. I would have said the casting, our casting team was amazing, worked really hard to make sure that uh, there were all all different cultures represented. And you briefly mentioned it this earlier, but I'd like to ask, how emotional and poignant did it get for you in some of your scenes with Emma? Because as she have said, the story is based on your mom and Annalyn is based on you as a daughter. And that what we see in the film, how Tala and Annalyn argued, how they loved each other, how Annalyn get angry with Tala, were all based on your real life experiences with your mom. So when shooting those scenes, how emotional was it for you? You know, it's interesting when I was, when you're actually on set working, I don't, I don't know that I'm, um, I don't know that I'm having that kind of uh, overarching 
thought of this is my mom and me because I feel like I've got to be so present in that moment being Tala and uh and you know working with Emma as Annalyn so I don't know that um it was emotional from the connection point with my mom but it was emotional in the moment with with Emma playing Annalyn and I think all of the all of the complexities of that mother-daughter relationship or parent-child relationship were there it was a it was it was amazing actually because the there were moments when we would we would clash like like a mother daughter and you could feel it and and I was like oh what's going on oh wait this is really good for <laughs> this is really good for our chemistry and and there were other moments where you know we just kind of fell into a wonderful just being with each other that I feel like you know I know as well uh, through my own mother daughter relationship so it was. Um, it was emotional, but not, but, but in a way that was, I think, contained more to, you know, set and being, being an actress, you know, being a daughter and a mother myself now, but um, it's the, the other feeling of being with my mom and feeling that relationship doesn't come until when you watch it. When I watched the cuts and when I, when we, we got to, to the final edit and then when I saw the movie come out on Roku channel and like watching the credits roll, that's when I really started to like, just, oh, we did it. We did it for you, mama. And you originally thought of Tala as being portrayed by another actress. How did Dean and Lisa Brenner convince you that you should play Tala? <laughs> well, they didn't have to convince me too hard, um, but I, when I was in the development process working with uh, our writer, Sean, I found out, I discovered very quickly in the process, if I thought of myself as playing Tala, I couldn't give notes. I literally was like, my notes were terrible. I was a, the worst creative producer ever if I imagined myself in the role. And so immediately took myself out of that. And then, so while I was giving notes, I just didn't, I, I pictured a other another woman of color in that role, once I separated myself, then I could give notes again. So I got so used to throughout the whole development process, a year and a half plus, not thinking of myself playing Tala. So when I pitched the movie to Dean and Lisa, I never, I never presented myself because I was already so used to like, no, 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 I'm not, I, I don't play Tala. Uh, but then Dean came back to me a few, a few days later and said, you know what, you lived with Tala for the past two years developing this script you know your mom better than anyone else why don't you just play it and I I was like really <laughs> and like I said I didn't have to he didn't have to twist my arm hard <laughs> and the story is, is a very timely and relevant warning that climate change is very real and a serious threat can you talk about that yeah, um, I do. I do hope audiences key into that and understand that if we don't manage our resources better, if we don't build institutional systems that are based on compassion and humanity, we can very much end up in a world like the deal. And I think some people would, some people would argue that we're almost there. We're we're there already with you know the desensitization over mass death that we've seen, you know, with the pandemic. So uh, one of our kind of, uh, I don't want to call it a joke, but one of the things that we would say during post-production is, you know, guys, we got to get this movie out there before it becomes a documentary. Because we, we actually, we didn't know about COVID before we went into the, like we, I started development in 2017. We finished filming in 2019 which is well before, uh, not, not, not well before, just before uh, COVID hit. So we didn't know this was coming down, that COVID was coming down the pipeline. So that was why when it started happening and we started seeing what was, what was going on in the world and how many people were dying, we were like, oh, guys, we got to get this movie up. And can you also talk about your commitment and passion to bring, bring about the normalization of seeing more Filipinos in leading roles? And also to encourage more diversity in behind the camera positions from showrunners to writers and directors. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, no, the the, the sci mainstream sci-fi and American dystopian films are are notorious for uh, their lack of diversity. So uh, for me, it was very important to disrupt that and to center to center us to center us not just as um, uh, how do I say it? Um, I think to center us as every people, you know, in, in a way that every parent can associate and relate to Tala's struggle to, you know, her love and her determination to keep her child safe. Um, I think the more we see us in these roles, obviously, the, the more empathy we can build for our communities through, you know, audiences seeing us in these lead roles. And hopefully that gives people permission to advocate for our communities in real life. So I think it's it's very, very important. And, um, you know, the production company uh, that uh, I helped found with Grace Lay, Lynn Lay Productions, we, you know, since this film came out, we've gone on to make, uh, to support and produce other films that, yes, our mission is to center historically marginalized people in front of and behind the camera in in the intergenerational stories that we tell. And how were you related to Severino Montano exactly? What did you know about him? Uh, Severino Montano is my great uncle. He is the brother of my Lola, uh, my, my maternal grandmother. Uh, and growing up, I I just I heard so much about his um his creativity and obviously how much he did for theater in the Philippines, uh, what a prolific playwright uh, he was, and how my grandmother used to act in his plays. Uh, and of course, there's a fair amount of chismes around his, you know, <laughs> you know, family life. That's kind of what I what I remember um it was really cool when the philippine government issued a stamp uh in honor of him and uh you know so in my my appreciation for him as my career in the arts has grown and continued my appreciation for what he did uh in the philippines and bringing theater to people um has has definitely grown as well just as you realize after working in this business how hard it is so I, I just, what you said just caught my attention that uh, your grandma was an actress too? Absolutely. Jesusa Montano Saddam. Yes. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, and there's an actress in the family? Yeah. They, the joke is that it skipped a generation because uh, my, my Lola had three daughters, none of whom um, are uh, in the arts. But then it came it came in again at the, uh, as for me um, as a grandchild. Yeah, she was an actress in the Philippines. She used to act... Um, at the arena theater, uh, she used to act in um, her brother's plays, uh, and my mom would always say, "That's where I got my OA, my art, my artiness from." <laughs> <laughs> For sure, <laughs> that's very Filipino. OA, that that term. Oh, oh, OA, completely, <laughs> always, always. I, you're so OA. You're yeah. so OA. <laughs> so you were you you as Fulbright scholar in the Philippines and worked as an investment banker in Manila, New York. In addition, please tell me more about yourself, where you were, where were you born, where you grew up in, and, and so on. Uh, I was actually born in the States, in Ohio. My parents met at the Ohio State University. They were both in graduate school there. And then after I was born, we actually moved to Thailand um, for uh, the first several years of my life. Thai was actually my first language. And then my parents separated. Uh, my mom and I came back to this country, uh, to the States, and she raised me here mostly as a single mom. And um, I don't know, she, I mean, she she drilled me with English and she, you know, she was very strict about my studies, even though she maybe wasn't as strict her, with herself when she was in school, <laughs> but she was really strict with me. Uh, I'm very fortunate that both my mom and dad helped me uh, to get to Harvard and 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 to help me go there um, financially, uh, and then afterwards, I always had the desire to pursue an artistic career, but I didn't feel like I could because my parents just spent so much money, and I I took out some loans too. I was like, we just spent so much money, I can't I can't move to New York to 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 try to become a starving artist or actor, you know. After that, so I found a way I, I feel like I acted my way through literally 20 rounds of interviews 
<laughs> 20, not rounds, but 20 interviews to get that job at Morgan Stanley. And uh, as an investment banker, I I treated it like an acting exercise and I put on my suit. That was my costume. I put on my makeup. I memorized my lines for the interviews and I went in, I got the job. And then I just realized like two and a, two and a half years later, I was like, what am I doing? This is not my passion. I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm working on deals that are like hundreds of millions. I think I did like over a billion dollars worth of deals as an investment banking analyst, but it wasn't, I wasn't passionate about it. And then uh, I, I quit, I quit banking. Um, I threw in a backpack. I traveled around the world because that was one of my dreams. I backpacked around the world and about three quarters of the way through that trip, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, wait a minute. I have, I have acting in my blood. I have, you know, I have a creative gene in me. I want to pursue a, a, a profession in the arts. And so I had saved up enough money from banking to, in order to be able to move to Hollywood and do that. So that's what I did. That's a great story. Thank you very much, Somali. But I have to tell you that I don't know if you're familiar with the designer uh, Joshi Datori. Yes, of course. She's Filipina, and yep. she also started in financial uh, in the financial industry. No, and like you, she also could not wait to go into something more creative. That's why she became a fashion designer. And look oh at her now. Oh my gosh, and I love her designs. I had no idea that she started off in finance too. Yeah, she was in Wall Street too. She started. Wow. In Wall Street. Yes. Yes. I didn't so know that. That's pretty rare. Listening to you just reminded me of her story as well. So, we, Jana and I hope to meet you in person someday. Are you based in New that. York or in 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 LA or in the I'm West in Los I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, we should meet there. We yeah, please meet. let me let me take you out. Let me treat you. I would yes, love. Yes, yeah, we, we should with with Fritz maybe. Fritz, thank yeah. you so much for making this possible. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.